In Kabuto Sumo, published by BoardGameTables.com, two to four players are competing to become the Beetle Wrestling Champions. Games take about 15 to 20 minutes. Arrange the sumo ring in the middle of the table. Have each player choose a wrestler card. They each have a different signature piece that is shown in the upper left-hand corner. Place your wrestler's signature piece to the side of the sumo ring, which will become the supply. You do not start with your wrestler's signature piece in your inventory, but rather will acquire it during the course of the game. Each wrestler also has unique special abilities, or signature moves, that we'll cover in more detail later. Next, choose one of the four colored wrestler pieces and its corresponding token. This is to help you remember which piece is yours during the game. Use the following diagrams to arrange the wrestler pieces and the discs on the sumo ring depending on your player count. I'll show them quickly here, but of course, feel free to pause the video or check the diagrams on the sidebar of page two in your rulebook. Here's two player setup, three player setup, and four player or 2v2 setup. Any remaining basic discs are added to the supply next to the sumo ring. Next, give each player two small green discs and one medium light brown disc to form their starting inventory. If playing a three player game, the player to go last gets two small discs and two medium light brown discs instead. And lastly, for a four player game, each team has a shared inventory and will receive in total two small discs and one medium disc. Choose a start player and you're ready. On your turn, place the pushing platform flush along any edge of the sumo ring. Choose one of the pieces in your inventory and push it in from the edge in a straight line with slow and steady pressure. No flicking or sliding your piece. No changing directions mid-push. From experience, it's very easy to adjust your direction slightly mid-push without realizing, but try your best to be a good sport. Stop pushing once your piece is completely inside the ring. No more, no less. Any basic pieces that are pushed off the edge of the ring as a result are added to your or your team's inventory. Any signature pieces that fall off are returned to the supply. Ampolla del Diablo's special ability breaks this rule, and if her signature piece ever falls off, you return it to your inventory immediately. If any pieces fall off the ring accidentally, not as the result of a player pushing a piece onto the board, add those back to the general supply. The first player or team to push an opponent's wrestler out of the ring wins. And if at any time you run out of pieces in your inventory, the other player or team wins. Also, you may perform any or all of your wrestler signature moves once per turn. They all share some similar traits. Most moves have a cost, which usually involves paying a type of piece to an opponent. That just means you give the piece from your inventory to an opponent's inventory. Other moves require you to stack pieces, which means taking the specified piece from your inventory and placing it on top of another piece of the same size or larger already in the ring. All of the wrestler's signature moves are pretty self-explanatory, except two, which we will cover now. First up is Cactus Jacked. One of his signature moves, Feigning Death, states, at the beginning of your turn, if your wrestler is touching the board edge, add one large disc or the cactus piece to your inventory. Unfortunately, the board edge is not defined in the rulebook, but after some digging through the Kickstarter FAQ, the board edge is defined as the dark brown ring on the edge of the board. Up next is Mighty Jaw Mike. His vice grip ability leaves a bit up to interpretation, but states if any part of a piece is inside and touching the mandibles, immediately knock out that piece and all pieces stacked on it. First is what is defined as inside and touching. All I could find was a comment from the developer on BoardGameGeek, essentially saying that any piece touching both edges of the mandible is considered to be inside it. So this counts, but this doesn't. Next up is the use of the term knockout. In this case, knock out the piece inside the mandible simply means to remove it from the ring. And if it's an opposing wrestler in the mandibles, you win the game. Finally, for a simpler experience which ignores the signature moves, choose one of the junior league wrestler cards at the start of the game. Instead of the regular starting inventory, use the inventory on the wrestler card. The colors are a bit hard to differentiate, but comparing them to each other makes it a bit easier to see which discs they intend you to start with. Normally, signature pieces are returned to the supply when they fall out of the ring, but in the Junior League variant, they are immediately returned to their respective wrestler's supply. In a three-player game, if one of the players runs out of pieces, they are eliminated, but their wrestler piece stays in the ring. One of the two remaining players can win by pushing them out. 
In a four-player game, the teams alternate taking turns, and each player on the team alternates as well. You may push any piece from your team's shared inventory, including any signature pieces. However, you can only perform your own wrestler's signature move. That's how you play Kabuto Sumo. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. If you found the video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe for future board game content just like this. Thanks for watching.